and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at variables and data types so let's first explain what is a data type a data type is as it says it's a type of data for example let's say we have a piece of text now the data type of a piece of text is a string because a string will represent a piece of text. So when I say this value is a string, you will have to know that this value is a piece of text. You also have things like float and float represents numbers that go like 9.3123, any non-whole numbers. So 3.14159 or even 0, 9.0, .0, that is perfect, or negative 2.3. So that is an example of a float, and we will be getting deeper into this as we continue of the course as well. You also get int, and int is an integer, it's a whole number. So that's one, negative, two, zero, and one. So these two are very similar, but they are quite different. Where float can have floating point values and integers can just be whole numbers. You also get things such as a uint, which we won't be getting too deep into, but let's say an integer has a limited amount of values it can store. Let's say an integer can only store 10. Not really, but let's say they can only store up until 10. Then a uint will be able to store up until 100, as an example. And it's obviously much bigger than this, but the idea still stands. You also have float 64, which has the same concept, but for float. So let's say it's going to go 1.3.1313, but a float 64 might be able to go 1313 again. So it basically doubles the precision you have. But again, you, we would be getting too deep into these yet, but this is just to give an around idea. You also have bool, which is a boolean. So this is true, which you can think of as yes, and false, which you can think of as no. So let's say I ask you, are you older than 18? You will say yes, that will be true. Or I can make a statement and say, you have gone to the store today. That statement is either true or false. Yes, I have gone to the store today, or no, I have not. True or false. And we will be getting deeper into that later. And then we also have char. Char is basically like a string, but it can only hold one character. That's all. Now that we know what the basic data types is we can use, let's actually get into what is a variable. A variable is like a little bit of storage we can use. Because let's say we have someone's name, Jack. We don't want to constantly type Jack in like a piece of text or anything like that. We would instead like to store Jack inside a word we can reuse. It's like you have, you have a box and you store a value inside of that box and carry that box around with you where you can later on use that value when taking it out of the box. To give you a real example, I could say var age is equal to 14. Now we have a variable which is like a little box. And whenever we use age, we will get this value back. So if I say echo age, and we run this, we get 14. So age here allows us to now reference this number without having to go, oh, but now I have to retype this each time. You know, you just have age. A reason this could be useful is let's say we have a little bit of a story. Very basic story. But imagine this story was a hundred thousand lines long. It wasn't just three. A hundred thousand. Now that's a lot. Well, if that was the case, then, then this here would not be that awesome. We should instead then go name and make it Mike. So then we can go here and say comma name and in that. Now, if we were to compile and run this, we will get this. Hello, my name is Mike. I'm 28 years old. My I like my name, Mike. It is a cool name. Make sure. So this still works. 
all we had to do was add commas here to add these together. But without this, let's say we were to want to change the name Mike to something else. Here we'll have to then change it to Jack, and in here we'll have to go Jack. And for the other 900,000 lines of code that has this, we have to change it manually. But because we have a variable, we just have to change the variable. So here we can just say Jack. And now the name everywhere where we use this variable will change to Jack. There we go, Jack and Jack. We can do the same with age. So var age is equal to 28. Then here we can say, instead of 28, we just say age. We run it. And now the age will also be a variable. And if you ever need to change it again, we only have to change one line. Now we'll get back to this example. So I'm not going to delete this, but I would like to show you more. So now here we can also specify what data type we specifically want this val variable to hold by going colon and specifying a data type. Let's say this has to be an int. We say int. Now this variable knows it should be an int, but by default, Nim can actually tell you what type it is without having to do this. However, it is always still recommended to use this, to, inf to get, tell it what the data type should be instead of having it infer it automatically because by doing this you're basically saying auto that means it will automatically figure out that this is a string but auto is just like invisible so you don't really use it but here as you can see we specified this should be of type integer if we were to go string then we'll actually get an error here because 28 is not a string it's a number to make it a string, you should put it inside of double quotes. So that's also how you can specify what specific data type it has to be. Take note, because of this, we cannot later on change the data type of something. So we can say age is equal to this. Because age is of type int, not of type string. So if we try to reassign this, it won't be allowed because this is an string. You could reassign it by putting the right data type there. So now age will be 34. Now we can actually go here and we can do this. And we can just say age. There we go. And we can just make this 29. So now not only will this age update, thanks to our reassigning here. So there are 29 and here it is 28. But it also makes it easier to manage the story because now age will always be 29. And we will always be sure that age is of type integer because age has been set to always be an integer. Same with name, name will always be a string. And this makes telling this story 20 times easier. Now, just a note, if you want to work with chars, then you'll have to use single quotes like that. Chars do not use double quotes, strings use double quotes. Now take note that Nim has a few weird quirks when it comes to creating variables. For example, variable my var, and we can just say hello. Now this is snake case. Generally in programming, snake case is used with an underscore, so spitting words of underscore. However, in Nim, they ignore the underscore as well as the casing. So if we go var, or if we actually go here and echo my var, as well as echo my var, as well as echo my var, like this. You'll actually notice if we were to run this, we get hello from all three of these my bars. It's a weird quirk in them, but basically underscores doesn't matter. Camel case doesn't matter. The only case that really does matter is Pascal case because my var 
this is not the same as any of these. So if I were to compile and run this, we'll actually get an error because this is undeclared. My var is not the same. So if the first case is a capital letter, then we know it's different from the rest here. It's a little quirk you should be familiar with. But basically with variables, the casing doesn't matter, except for the very first character. If it's uppercase, it's a different variable. And let's take a look at a few more cool quirks here. Let's say we have a bunch of variables. So let's actually make it easier on ourselves to say var x is equal to 10, var y is equal to 29, var z is equal to s, var a is equal to satsta. Okay, let's say we have all of these variables. Now we are already declaring our variables a lot. So one thing we can do that is very nice of them is we can just indent like this. Now all of these will be part of the variable. So all of them will work as normal variables. The only difference is we don't have to specify var in front of each of them. Instead, we just indent it. Take note, I'm indenting it. I pressed tab, but you could also just like use a space. That's fine as well. But I pressed tab. So I indented it so it's all in here. You'll notice a lot of them is similar to Python in terms of its indentation. Basically, NIM prefers indentation above like brackets and stuff. Anyhow, so all of these are val valid ways to declare a variable. And you can still say int, that's perfectly fine here. You can still say string is the same. Just now you don't have to specify var each and every time. Now let's take a moment to talk about const. So a const is a constant value, meaning it will never change. If we say var x is equal to 10, and then we say x is equal to 19, we echo x, them won't care about this. They'll be perfectly fine with us changing x into something else, and that's 19. However, let's say we were to say const. If we were to say const x, this will not be allowed because once you've set x, you cannot change x. So then it has to be this value forever. And of course it has the same quirks where if you go like this, you can declare multiple at a time. However, we should take note that let's go like this. Let's create a variable z is equal to 99. We cannot do this. X is equal to Z. The reason for it is constants are set during compile time. Once you compile your program, the constant should be set. Now this means that things like variables, which does not have a value during compile time, cannot be used in this scenario because this doesn't have a value during compile time. In cases such as this, you can instead use let. Let is also a constant. However, let specifically doesn't need a value once the program compiles. So, if we print out x here, it will work perfectly fine. But if let was instead const, then it won't work because cannot evaluate at compile time z. Because as far as they know, Z will become 12. They don't know that because how will they know? But with let, you can do that. But as I said, let is the same as const. Just one needs to have a value during compile time. So we say X is equal to nine here. Or just normal nine there. We'll still get an error because you cannot assign it to x because it is a constant value. So const and let are the same. The main difference is let can have a value or can have a value that's not determined at compile time where const needs a value that is set. So you can do something such as const 
x is equal to 2 and then say y is equal to x. This is fine because x has a value during compile time. So x will also have a value here during compile time. So y will also. This is allowed. But let p is equal to 9. You cannot do this because again, let does not have a value during compile time. Same as var. Only difference is var can be changed. Let cannot be changed. Const is the same as let, but it needs to have a value during compile time. If you're wondering which to use, I always just use let unless I need to change the variable later, then I use var because it is recommended to use let wherever possible because that is a constant. Now, the reason why there is two type of constants, const and let, is because of compile time compiling, which means const is actually faster than let because we know the value and we can basically hard code it. Where let is a little bit slower because we don't know the value. It can be any value. So that needs to be determined at a later stage. Because for all we know, we can get user input and stored inside of lit. So that needs to be used during runtime and not compile time. Also, one more thing before we finish off this course or this tutorial. I told you that if you have something such as my var, let's make that nine. It is the same as my var and my var and whatnot, as long as the first that you here is not a cap capital case. Now, it is still recommended to always use this. If you're using snake case, just use snake case. If you're using camel case, just use camel case. But there's also one thing you can do. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you could go in these little quotation marks here, my var. Now this is allowed and it will be converted into this. So if we run it, we won't get any issues. I would not necessarily recommend it, but if you prefer to declare your variables in multiple words, then you can. My var is cool. And now we can go my var is cool and my var is cool run it will still work. I wouldn't recommend this, but you can if you want to, if you don't want to use snake case or camel case. And yeah, that is that for variables. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.